Hey squad, on today's video I want to discuss pacemakers. This subject is close to my heart, literally. For those that are unaware, I actually have a pacemaker. I received the device in October of 2020 due to having multiple instances of severe bradycardia, which then in turn caused syncopal episodes. You can actually hear me speak more about my pacemaker on the Medic Materials podcast. Links to the show can be found in the description below. A cardiac pacemaker is a small electronic device that is implanted under the skin of the upper chest wall. The device's main purpose is to aid the heart in producing a heartbeat and maintaining cardiac output. Typically, these devices are implanted on patients with cardiac dysrhythmias like pulsed ventricular tachycardia or rapid atrial fibrillation or bradycardias like heart blocks. The average patient that receives a pacemaker is between 65 and 85 years of age. However, remember, young people still can have cardiac issues. My cardiologist said their youngest pacemaker patient was 14 years old. Do not fall into the trap that you have to be an adult to have a cardiac complaint. Current pacemaker models are small and must be implanted via a surgical procedure in the cardiac cath lab. The days of the big old block found under someone's chests are over. Mine is the size of a silver dollar and the thickness of two silver dollars stacked on top of each other. You would never notice it was in my chest unless you palpated around my chest and around the incision scar. Be mindful that these devices can be placed on the left or right side of the chest wall. There are three main types of pacemaker devices single chamber, which has one lead to either the right atrium or right ventricle, dual chamber, which is the most common of pacemakers. There are two leads, one in the right atrium and one in the right ventricle. Lastly, there is a biventricular pacemaker, which has three leads, one in each ventricle and one in the right atrium. Recently, however, there have been breakthroughs in pacemaker technology to where there is now a micro pacemaking device that actually attaches directly to the heart muscle itself. This device paces the ventricle directly and is only the size of a vitamin capsule. There is one other major pacemaking device that you must be aware of and that is a pacemaker defibrillator. This device delivers not only a pacing shock, which typically the patient cannot feel, but also a defibrillation shock to correct life-threatening rhythms like ventricular tachycardia. EMS education really doesn't do a great job explaining pacemakers. We touch base on it and say, here, watch out for patients that have them. But that's about it. ALS providers need to be aware of EKG changes like pacing spikes and ST changes that are device caused and not myocardial infarction caused. BLS providers must be aware of where they're placing defibrillation pads and when to request a paramedic for further care. Just like you, I didn't know a lot about pacemakers until I got one myself. The biggest thing I've learned is that the programming of the device itself is patient specific. I didn't realize how specific these computers can be programmed to produce a certain effect. Take mine. If my intrinsic heart rate drops below 40 beats per minute, my pacemaker activates and will deliver three pacing shocks in succession. Boom, boom, boom. Then it will increase to 20 beats above my average heart rate for that day. So if the computer has calculated that my average heart rate that day is 75, it will pace me at a rate of 95 beats per minute for two minutes. After two minutes, it stops and re-examines the intrinsic rate. If the rate has returned to normal, the computer deactivates. If it's still bradycardic, then it would continue pacing. These types of devices are called on-demand pacemakers. There are continuous pacemakers that pace the heart at all times. It is imperative that you as an EMS provider, whether ALS or BLS, that you speak to your patient and find out exactly what type of device they have and if they know how the device operates. Lastly, I want to leave you with this. Depending on the manufacturer, the pacemaker could operate differently or be seen differently on an EKG. Ask your patient to see their device identification card. This card gives you information on the device itself, including the serial number. The other piece of equipment that most patients with these devices have are a home base station. 
Each night, the information gathered internally by the pacemaker computer uploads via Bluetooth to this base station and then to the cloud at the patient's cardiologist office. If you need information, call the patient's cardiologist and have the office examine the information from the base station and tell you what rhythms the office has been seeing. This could clue you in on a lot of information about the cause of your patient's complaints, especially in instances like syncope. Well, that's it for today, guys. As always, stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next video.